Hey there guys and welcome back to Unjaded Jade. So today's video is all about A-level chemistry and how I revised for it and how I managed to do well at AS. So if you've been with me for a while, you probably know that last year I really struggled with A-level chemistry. I did four A-levels last year and I would 100% hands down say that it was the hardest A-level I did. Um, I really struggled with the content, I struggled to do well in end of chapter tests and it definitely caused me the most stress and I often came home and like cried about how I was finding A-level chemistry. So yeah, I really had to work hard to kind of develop a good way of revising for myself and I think the resources that I found and the way that I use them has allowed me to do well ultimately. So yeah, I hope this helps you out, especially if you are struggling with chemistry. And I find it does get better. Like this year, I actually, dare I say it, think that chemistry is like almost enjoyable. Not all the topics, but most of the topics. It was very satisfying when you can do questions that are hard. Okay, so first thing, um, I always make sure that I really understand the content first. So in order to do this, if I haven't already asked my teacher or asked questions in lesson or asked my friend to clarify it or something like that, um, I will always turn to videos on YouTube. Um, online resources are the best thing for A-level chemistry because there are so many resources out there. On YouTube, type in E-Rintal. I'll insert it here, E-Rintal. Those are some great videos for understanding A-level chemistry or Allery chemistry as well is pretty good. Um, I feel like YouTube is great for understanding. Even just type in A-level chemistry, see what comes up. Number two, when I've understood it and generally after every single lesson, I make my flashcards. And I feel like I've kind of come away from flashcards in a way for A-level chemistry, um, whereas I rely on them more for biology. So I still make them and I still summarize my content and I still go over the content through my flashcards. But with chemistry, it is so much about understanding that flashcards don't just cut it anymore, I guess. But yeah, the third thing which goes along with flashcards is probably the most useful thing that you should take out of this video. And that is a website called ChemRevise, like Chem Revise. It is honestly life changing. Just type it in. I'm not, I think they do all specs, uh, but they definitely do AQA. And they have all the topics for AS and A-level chemistry. And I'm not joking, I print off every single sheet for all the topics and it's such an amazing summarized resource with all like little boxes um, of things that you kind of need to know, like key things from that chapter, but also the boxes have things that kind of come up um, a lot in questions which aren't necessarily like highlighted in a textbook. It also has like little practical diagrams and just like tips and I don't know, I love those sheets. And I actually always use the chem revised sheets whenever I make my flashcards now. So I kind of get my flashcard content a lot from both my lesson notes, but also from the chem revised sheets. And number four for revision is to make sure that you've kind of understood the content, um, but that you also know it. I don't know if you saw my revision technique video, but there is this really cool kind of new revision technique that I've been using a lot this year, and it's called blurting or memory mind map. I named both, I named it those things, so that that's not like an official name, but you know. But especially for inorganic chemistry, where a lot of just like stupid learning is required, it is very useful and I do tend to use it whenever I have a test. Um, you can do it in time conditions or just in as much time as you have at that moment. Um, and you can also make little headings so that you can do the blurt method in future more quickly. And number five is another amazing online resource is, is it resource or resource? I don't know. Anyway, another really good online resource is A-Level Chemistry. Just type in that, alevelchemistry.com or whatever it is. Great website, love that. It basically just has so many like past paper questions and it has them for each little topic, like subtopic of each chapter, as well as an overall test and an assessed homework. And it has mark schemes for everything. And if I ever have a revision like test or a test on a chapter I've not done a test on before, I will always make sure I do some questions from that website first to kind of get um, get the feel of them, I guess. That is the great thing about chemistry is there are so many like amazing resources online. And number six, using those questions that you've done and the mark schemes, 
come up with really common questions that always come up. Right, let me name some for you. You know that, that question, if you do AQA, you probably know what I'm talking about. The one where it's like, oh, this like bond enthalpy is different from the one quoted in the data book. Why is that? And it's like two marks. That comes up in almost every paper I've ever done. So you'll probably spot questions like that. Just make a note of them in your flashcards and write the answer. And so when you're going through your flashcards, you can look at common questions. And equally, if you notice that you're making the same sort of mistake over and over, just make a note of that and put it in your flashcards. So for example, um, when I calculate my Q equals MCAT energy thing, um, I often do all the calculations right and then I forget to put a minus because it's exothermic, so I just forget to do that. So yeah, in my notes, I have like a massive thing saying like, sign, like, put the sign minus. And last, I'm filming, but you can, there's dad. <laughs> and number 10, become familiar with your specification, which you can find on your specification website. Um, so for me, AQA, go on the AQA website, download the spec and see what you actually need to know. Um, I'm pretty sure the website A-Level Chemistry also has a condensed version of the specification for each spec as well. Yeah, and within that, I think it is very important and often overlooked um, to focus on the practicals. So I know for AQA, there is this document with the method of every single practical that you kind of like need to know, the required practicals and that is honestly one of the things that dropped me so many marks in AS was just not knowing the practicals and well guess what the tests have questions on the practicals in them so yeah I highly recommend becoming familiar with your practicals and not just discounting them because a lot of the questions especially application questions are based on them and lastly, I recommend that you do the practice questions at the end of each chapter of the textbook. They are based on past exam paper questions and should not be overlooked. And you can find the answers to them in a document online. So yeah, I hope this helped you out. And if you're really feeling stressed about A-level chemistry and how you're doing in it, um, I just kind of want to reassure you that it does get better, but it does require hard work. So just keep having that faith, okay? And keep doing your best for every test. If things aren't working for you, try out new resources, try out new techniques, um, get help. Um, you do have to really keep on top of chemistry and don't think that because you don't understand it now that suddenly it will just click without you doing the work. You do kind of have to make that effort to understand it. But equally, if it feels very demoralizing, like you can't do it right now, you honestly can. And it just requires a little bit more effort. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped you out. And let me know in the comments if you have any tips of your own for A-level chemistry. Please give this a thumbs up if this helped you. And yeah, good luck. <laughs>